people ever remember my name. Um, I, I pray that they remember these characters just like Sesame Street. Hi friends, this is Christopher Pereira from Tepeyac Leadership and you are on the All Over the Place podcast where the fun sanity never ends. Hello and welcome back to All Over the Place. I'm your host, Eric Bervazic, and thanks for joining us, folks. I, I, I know I sound like a broken record, I'm sure, but every week we continue to grow. It's because of you. Everyone is listening, subscribing, sharing. Thank you so much. And, and we're going to continue to keep growing and keep having awesome guests, just like we have again today. Not a three for folks. That's right. We have a guest, but I'm going to bring in my three for and all around awesome co-host, Jim Culver. How are you today, Jim? I'm great. How are you? Life is good, my man. It's always good when it starts out with a, with a morning mass. I, I, I do like, like this. Yeah. And our, our, our priest is back in action. The, the priest who reminds me of, I think I may have mentioned him to you, he reminds me of uh, Thaddeus Picotter. just has that that look, that Mr. Burns thing going on. And he always has awesome things to say in his homily. So it, it's a great day. Great day. And oh. joining us today, folks, we've got an author an inspirational speaker, a songwriter, singer, and she's got 20 plus books under her belt. And please welcome to All Over the Place, Lisa Caprelli. Hi, Lisa. Hi. <laughs> and there's Going one on of those 20 point. books I was talking about, a few in the background around her. So uh, so Lisa, just uh, right, right out of the gate, what inspired you to become an author? I love when children ask me that question too. It's a combination of many things. Um, I often say uh, my only voice was on paper as a child. Um, think back to your seven-year-old self. Well, my seven-year-old self, I was really shy. I tell children when I speak um, to schools all over the country, um, I tell the children, think of the think of the quietest, shyest kid in your class. That was once me. So. Remember back then, we didn't have Google, YouTube. Uh, we're older than Google and YouTube. I didn't be my children. Um, so my only voice was truly on paper. I didn't. We didn't have phones. We didn't have a computer. So I loved sharing my thoughts, feelings, and emotions on paper, observing the world around me. I used to be not like that I was shy. I wish I was, you know, more extroverted, like the popular kids, that kind of thing. Always felt left behind. Um, I was a middle child of five. My, my mom... Um, God bless her, uh, raised uh, five children on her own. So we didn't grow up with good communication. There's no manual to being a parent. All of us know that to, be as, to begin with. And so um, writing and expressing my emotions and reading books, all that was was going to lead um, segue into my adulthood and going back and, and writing books for children, the child within me and the child within all of us. And I... I am so grateful that God gave me this incredible purpose, this mission, this calling, because if it wasn't for him knowing me more than I knew me in 2021, when I hit a rock bottom and felt like, what's the point of this? Do I matter? Things like many of us, I think, go through in, at times of, of struggle and hardship. I it was something that gave me purpose, meaning and joy and something that when I became a Christian at that time, I wanted to go back to my childlike self, to the child in all of us, and write books for children um, that are Christian-based also. So this is my In His Image series. I have two more coming out in English and Spanish. Uh, one's called Where is God? And one is called Butterfly Whispers. It's a story about grief, loss, and hope. And that does, has not even included my Unicorn Jazz series. Thank you for putting those characters in the back that we got to create. My illustrator, my cousin, Davey, and I. So yes, to date, I've created over 21 books in, in English and Spanish, and I continue to write. I'm going to write till the day I die. And I'm so grateful that God gave this purpose that I come with an army of people representing me and the wisdom poured into me of many. So that's your short, long story. <laughs> I, I, I love I love long answers to short questions and short questions and long answers and, and long questions, which I've been known to ask in a very confusing pathway. But not today, not today. But I and I love how you, you, you came to that realization and you mentioned God and everyone. You always hear that he works in mysterious ways and. Yes, that can be true. But I also think that he works in not so mysterious ways and just puts it out there for us, for us to just to discover within him and and look where, where I mean, it's led you down an amazing path. I don't think that's so mysterious at all. 
Yeah, I'm so grateful and I, I love the honor that comes with it and to be able to impart, you know, wisdom into children, again, from the collective wisdom that's poured into me, I, I come with many, it's not just me. And it's definitely not my words. Now, you know, I pray about coming on a podcast like yours. Like, God, give me the wisdom so that whoever's watching this gets something valuable. I, I, I don't like it to be about me, even though I know it is. I, I have shared my story so many times. Again, the shy girl that didn't feel she once mattered. And I just rather share with people, you know, stories and pictures that resonate with them and that I've been called to bring because as I study scripture with my background in social emotional learning, my background in social psychology, I find that we come back to the same things. We are all designed for love. We are designed for goodness. I mean, common sense things. We know that. And as is being brought up in scripture uh, quite frequently in the last couple of weeks, Jesus reminds us, bring us, bring me a child, be childlike. And the fact that you've chosen to take that path and get, get kids and inspire them when they're young. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah 29, 11 is for, I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and to not harm you, but plans to give you hope and a future. And that's for all of us. And isn't it wonderful that we can take timeless stories out in the Bible. Nobody is so unique that they're escaping what's, what's been created for a very long time. And I wish that I would have had someone that said, Lisa, learn this when you're young, you know, and that's, but as my sisters remind me, we have now from this day forward. And, and I love the Joel um, scripture that God restores, God will restore the lost years because I, as many of us can, can feel that we've lost so much time when we don't know God. And, one thing again, I mentioned it. Just be an inspirational speaker, an inspirational writer. I love your your hashtag. Be bold with kids. Be brave. And it was it was that designed, uh, you know, to maybe help kids when they were at when you were the that kid, in the, the, the quiet kid. Are you inspiring? Is that did you come yes. up with that to inspire yes. them to, to reach within? Yes. Be bold. Be brave. It's it's a courage that God wants us to have courage. And it's, um, I'm studying Psalms right now with my sisters and it's talking about, I'm sorry, in Timothy about not being shy and being bold and, and courageous to share the truth, to share what we know and uh, be bold, be brave for my unicorn jazz hashtag. Thanks for doing that research um, <laughs> is just a combination of that because after I shared the stories with children and, and they see, they see me now with all the books and, you know, I've created a homegrown TV show and I created, I, my characters have come to life <laughs> with puppets. My older son, Matthew is a nurse. He plays the voice of the puppet. Um, I'd love to give you this. He's so funny. And all these people um, that came to me as they see my passion and complete joy that want to help. And uh, I'm just so, 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 so grateful that I've been able to take my creative visions and ideas. My past work before all this is I was in business and marketing. I once had radio shows. I was once on your side where I interviewed people. I love interviewing people. Um, and we all have different seasons and callings in our life. And uh, this is a season now for me to share all the goodness with, with children and adults, because like you said, we all have a child within us and we are called to be childlike. And I, it's really a shame that um, sometimes when we are when we grow up and we adult, we lose that. We lose the laughter. We lose the joy. But we're designed for joy. These are the fruits of the spirits we're designed for: joy, kindness, patience. There's no such law against those things, and that's what Galatians says. You know, self-control. And it's just so nice to be a role model to children to show them that I was once the girl over here, grew up poor, you know, uh, the odds were against us. I grew up in a Hispanic family. Um, just so many things that I never thought I would change my life. I never thought I'd see an ocean and I got to live by an ocean for many years and still live in California. I get to travel the country. I really travel the world wherever God takes me. And I, I pray that he gets to take me to a lot of places wherever there's children. And I love being with children, being meeting them where they're at. Um, I'm not, I don't like tourist things. I like to be where people are anywhere in the world and just thank God for each day being anew that I get all these 
ways of, of reaching people. There's too many to keep up. I mean, I can't, my illustrator can't keep up with the, the books that we have. So we rather make quality books than quantity, but uh, they just keep on coming because of the incredible feedback that people like and they connect to. Be childlike, not childish, I think is what Jesus told us. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that the average American adult laughs only 17 times a day. How many do you think the average child black laughs? Yeah. That is lame. Seven. Adults only laugh 17 times a day? The average child laughs 100 times a day. When I started working with children, again, my background was business, working with grownups, not children, even though I still work with grownups. We're in a grownup show right now. Um, but I love finding that that joy. And working with children and now even babies, I I have a baby board book. I tell people I'm like a Benjamin Button. If you know that movie backwards, I once worked with seniors, then adults, teens, and now children. And um, I am, I, I'm so grateful because I, it, you know, as we know, laughing keeps you young, you know, having joy. And, but we can find it at any given moment. It's all in our attitude. And it's, it's, we want the enemy not to defeat our good attitudes and joy and goodness within us. Amen. Well, you're speaking to a couple of adult of, of uh, children in adult bodies, so I think we're I think we're right on your wavelength there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, speaking as a parent, you know, uh, it seems like there's a, there's a lot more competition for the the attention of children, the the learning space of children's minds than ever before. Uh, <clears throat> I, th I think your books do a fabulous job of of um, of communicating, you know, biblical values and important values. Uh, to children, but what would you say is kind of the key to not capturing a child's attention, but just kind of uh, kind of getting through to them about about the right values? What would you say is the key to promoting those values to a child? It's a great question. It's really connecting again, like I said, meeting people where they're at. Yes, people, we do have faster attention uh, spans. This book here, I'm going to show you uh, just a few pages of being happy with unicorn jazz and friends, which is we all want happiness. We all want joy. Well, I'm going to tell you, before I became Christian, I thought like I, I wanted to create the book instead of being happy. I, I wanted to call it love is love is is actually taken and trademarked. So I came up with something else, which is happiness and simple. These are little things that made me happy or maybe in my fantasy brain when I tell children who has a gorilla, obviously nobody raises their hand, but they love laughing, laughing. And by the time they're done, I go into schools where children create their own Be Happy pages. I even have a program where students um, create their own books. Classrooms are making their own Be Happy pages and I'm teaching them how to do that and how to self-publish. Well, my character in my In His Image series, her name is Joy. And I created Joy because as I learned from Joy is something that's permanent. You can have joy, peace at the same time. You can have joy and pain at the same time. And happiness is sometimes something that is, it's a, it's a way to be. It's good to have both, obviously. And you mentioned a shorter attention span. And I just read yesterday, that like in the last 25, 30 years, percentages have flipped to uh, the smaller amount of kids who are reading. How do you yes. get through to the kids who that, just don't think that is, reading is cool? Yes, and, and to continue on that answer, did you grow up watching Sesame Street? Who uh, grew up Sesame, Sesame Street, I believe, is a four months older than I am. Yeah, so I, I, I had a little <laughs> bit of that in my life. Okay, I bet you you could still remember some of those Sesame Street moments based on the songs and that, you know, when I ask people this. So... I loved Sesame Street. I actually learned a lot from Sesame Street. I, you know, I wish it was, they would have been, I'm just making this up, God Sesame Street, because I would have learned all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but during the pandemic, when I was stopped from going into schools and I was stopped from doing my thing, like many of us were, that's when I said, well, I have to create something else. And I just, all of these visions came to me like Sesame Street. Obviously I'm not Sesame Street um, and I have my own brand, but I pray about taking, you know, I turned my characters quickly into puppets. I created a homegrown, a homegrown TV show. And thanks to technology like Instagram, I reached out to Broadway stars, singers, kid Broadway stars and kid singers to help me with the thing I do show, which is based on my book and song, The Thing I Do. So that was so fun. I learned video editing at the time because my people couldn't keep up with my ideas. 
And so on um, the note you said, how do I make my message different or capture children's attention? Well, all my books come with songs. And I knew I was going to do that when I when I was a mom. I used to sing to my kids, even though they may not have liked my singing, but I still like to do <laughs> sing. And so I knew like Sesame Street, you combine music, you use technology, which we get to do with platforms like YouTube and so many video platforms that it makes the children want to learn more. I, I pray about my work becoming a cartoon series one day on all that note of keeping it, like you said, how do we capture the attention span of children? But at the same time, you know, parents, grandparents and at schools, they we, we want to encourage, you know, reading um, and drawing, things like that. You know, I mean, I don't think that there's a school that just gives nonstop learning on video today. So, and then we as, as parents, uh, I know if I had, if my parents were young um, at, with technology now, I probably would not want them to have a lot of screen time because we know that what that does to us. Very true. And just reading about all the the country, I'm sorry, the, all the states now that are in a uh, class action lawsuit against TikTok because yeah. it's damaging kids' brains. Yeah, it's 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 a shame because it's it's not meant to be a babysitting tool. I can understand when you would want to give, you know, if there's just. And, and, you know, Lord knows that I have not always got parenting rights, so I'm not here to, to criticize. Um, I just see what some what young moms do that I know that they don't, they say they're not giving their children screen time. They're not giving them a phone on purpose unless they're watching something together. And, and it's a, it's a hard thing to do because we live in, in a technology world today where it's all around us. I mean, think of how we can just pick up the TV and watch anything at our fingertips. When you and I grew up, we had like three channels to choose from. Three channels and UHF, which included PBS. Yeah, there you go. And, well, and it just comes, it comes back to the Catholic in me. Everything in moderation. Yes. Certain things to excess, but most things in sure. moderation. Yes. And, and one of those values that uh, you have in the book, uh, help and give back, I think is such an important message and in terms of promoting a non-selfish behavior. Tell us what inspired that. Yes. Um, we'll have to play that. There's a song that's helping give back. I created that during the pandemic as well because I was using that time to help others. I connected with nonprofits. I, in one year, went from raising what I thought, being proud of 350 books to give to children's hospitals and um, underserved children. The following year, I went from 350 books to um, 6,000 books coming my way to give. It was like Jesus and the fish story. And I just remember um, saying, thank you, God, and finding homes for all these books. And through the years, it took me more than a year to give them away. Um, and I help and give back is inspired by when I was a child, even though we grew up poor, my sister Ruth and I, we would still find 10 cents to take the bus to go serve at a hospital and things like that. I always thought that people just have a volunteer gene in them. And I always find that if you serve others, you, when if you're feeling alone, go help someone, you know, go whatever, wherever it is, there's always a way to help someone. And during my transition, like I talked about when I came out of rock bottom, and my sister is telling me, use this time to help others. And I, I have incredible gifts. Thank, thank you, God. And I, I helped um, food pantries. I helped uh, um, Orange County Children's Hospital and many, many uh, places that, that serve children. If they're, if they're doing something with children, I want to be there as much as I can. And so help and give back shows um, each page is different ways we can help. So when I go into schools, I'm telling children, you know, planting a tree is helping. Even if you have a pet, you're taking care of a pet that's helping. And I, I even, there's a page about technology. If, if who here knows someone, I tell the children, who here needs to help someone older than them with technology, like a remote control? And they <laughs> raise their hands. And I said, but you have to do it nice and with grace and kindness because that's still helping, you know, teachers help us, of course. Uh, there's so many, you know, opening the door for someone is helping. So there's the song that goes, and, and I'll give it to you if you want to play it um, when this goes live. Um, Absolutely. We'll include it. Yeah, we'll talk about it now. We'll yeah. throw that in. Sure. Yeah.
song bring joy, joy, clap along the way. Hey, find someone to help, we can do it every day. Share a toy your gift, it's your heart you lift. Find someone to help, you can do it every day. Help and give back, help and give back. What can you do? You can help and give back. Help and give back, help and give back. You open your heart when you help and give back. Be a friend in need, teach them when to read. Find someone to help, you can do it every day. Care for someone ill, the spirit you will fill. Find someone to help, you can do it every day. Help and give back, help and give back. What can you do? You can help and give back. Help and give back, help and give back. You open your heart when you help and give back. Sesame Street, of course, you know, our generation growing up with uh, Schoolhouse Rock and just getting the messages uh, in, into our heads that we can, I can still do the preamble now, the 5, 10, 15, everything. Right. But as you're uh, giving the kids now these messages with song, which I think is still such a, an amazing learning tool, what have been some of the, the success stories or some of the feedback you've gotten from the kids? Yes. I mean, children are just inspired when I go in with all these, you know, um, making it a fun, educational and entertaining experience. And a lot of times, I mean, they'll ask, like, are you famous? And I said, no, I'm not famous. But Unicorn Jazz, I want her to be famous. I want Joy to be famous. I don't care if people ever remember my name. Um, I I. Pray that they remember these characters just like Sesame Street. We sometimes people don't even know who played the characters of Sesame Street. We remember though the Kermit, the the Ernie, the the Cookie Monster, those characters, right? Almo. And so for me, um, children ask me questions. I'll, I have a little fifth grade boy asked the other day, what's it like to be creative? Is it hard? And I said, no, is it hard to imagine? Is it hard to dream? I get asked questions about um, about the technology and how I put it all together. Of course, kids are very interested in that. They they actually know what green screen is, and I, I reminded the growing up we didn't have green screen; it was just a sheet. Uh, they're very curious, and uh, the teamwork that goes into my books, like the thing I do, that it inspires us all to do the things that we love to do. They're all gifted in different ways. We know that. And so here, by the end of the story, I, I tell children um, to share with their classmates what are the things they like to do. And they're, you know, maybe those are the ones that are going to grow up to be, you know, math majors and accounting than CPAs. Not me. I'm not a math person. Maybe they're like Nayali who likes art. Maybe they're like Sam the Snake that likes to bake. Everyone loves technology. They all like being like Magna Mouse. So different things like that. The thing I do is about the things that you love to do, whether it's a hobby, interest, or career. And, and that's the name of my show is that we all get to see the different things and different people in the world that make it go round. And I'll tell you, when, when adults learn the concept of the thing I do, I have adults that are 40, 50 plus years old that really don't, they can say the things that they love to do, or all of a sudden they start picking up the guitar and playing and doing the things that they love to do. And I love hearing those stories because remember that goes into the joy in our hearts. And it's never too late at any age to find that joy, to find your purpose, to find your happiness so that you can give it to others. The more that you yourself are happy and have joy, you, whoever's listening, the more that you find your happiness, your joy, what's meant for you, because you are God's masterpiece. When you find that, watch how you radiate and watch how people, it, they're just drawn to you because you have something to give that's designed uniquely like you, 
how you were made to be. And um, it's a shame that oftentimes I hear, you know, where young adults are encouraged in college to find uh, careers for play at safe jobs, you know, or be the doctor, be the lawyer, be the things that make you money. That's not the thing I do concept. The thing I do is we are all designed to do and wired differently, we're supposed to be. Imagine if I was not the shy girl. I tell kids, what would I be doing? And they say, well, I wouldn't, you know, I would be talking, I wouldn't have been the writer. I got to observe the world around me and I don't regret it now that I grew up exactly how I was because all these ideas and all these visions when everyone was talking, I have a Rolodex of them. Yes, is it harder as I get older to draw from some of them? Yeah, that's okay, that's part of the seasons of life. And uh, I just find that it's just so important. And I, I want everyone to find the things that they love to do. I want everyone to tap into their inner joy and to be able to share the celebration of who they are with others and everyone around them. That is so cool. I love that. I also love the fact that you've got family working with you, whether you mentioned your son and, and, and your cousin. What was it like bringing them into the fold, especially, you know, uh, Davey Villalobos, your illustrator? What's, it, what's that relationship like? It's awesome. And it wasn't. It, it is hard how they say working with family. But I've learned along the way how to work with them when having the behind the scene conversations, telling them why I do this. I mean, my kids know that. You know, I'll sometimes uh, before I go sleep to when I have an author visit the next day at a school and making sure everything's right. And they come with me now. They see the joy. They see the joy in children. I mean, it, it's hard to, to children can't doesn't do not fake their joy. <laughs> Maybe as adults, we can fake our joy. Children don't. Um, Unfiltered. And, and very real. My older son, Matthew, who's a nurse, he dresses up in his scrubs and he's actually an extrovert. So he loves all the attention. People are asking for his autograph because he's just so funny and he playing Trey Ziki. And I named Trey Ziki after my younger son, Trey, who is the complete opposite of Matthew, wanted not a lot to do. He he went, he did not want anything to do with a unicorn. He's a sports kid, da, 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 da. So when I created Trey Ziki, that was okay. <laughs> so, um, my daughter-in-law works with me. She's a, a, a psych NP, a, me a mental health, a nurse practitioner. And she loves the behind the scenes of all this. And my sister, Suzanne, uh, Debbie, Ruth, my sisters, they help with the editing behind the scenes, knowing that I'm going to go up one day and sh share these messages in front of thousands of kids and they want me to look good. So they, they really edit a lot of my books and I love it. I, and I tell kids part of editing is you have to accept that positive critique and, and criticism. So my books undergo lots and lots of rewrites. Sometimes um, I've had to completely redo the words in some books and, and it's okay. And because the final product is again, is for children. I, I, we want to create books that the children can come back to and adults and adults that read the books to children that they can come back to time and time again and look at something different and see it a different way. And my illustrated Davy, whose dream since he was a child, he, he loved, uh, he was the kid that was uh, drawing on walls with crayons and he gets to do what he loves. And so he says to me, you have the hard part. I just have to draw. <laughs> and, and honestly, without his incredible art, I can't wait to show you the, the books even coming out. That, that conveys so much meaning um, in a concept called show, don't tell. Um, his art, kids love re uh, recognizing that it makes it look like they could do it too. And that's what we wanted. And in the coming stories, I, I have a story, uh, Butterfly Whispers, that's coming out um, before Christmas, God willing. And it's a story about hope, uh, grief and loss. And that's a hard subject to write about, especially for a child. But the imagery of all that, when people, when adults read that book and, and it's not on a market yet, adults come back saying, I cried. And I'm just like, okay, so that's when you know you are doing the right thing, when you can, you know, invoke those feelings and emotions with your work. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know. And with the animated series, and I've got, I'm um, sharing, for those of you who are listening on our audio platforms, uh, very quickly, just check out Lisa Caprelli over at HTTPS, uh, the usual stuff, linktr.ee slash unicorn jazz. And you can get, there's everything over there. Like, you know, you can 
see the uh, you know just uh, media appearances get the, the uh, head over to Amazon get all of her books it's it's all things Lisa Caprelli over there and so uh, the the book you just mentioned uh, coming up for Christmas that'll be on there as well just it'll link you through Amazon correct 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 with social media now I mean just uh, how how uh, what kind of feedback do you get get from there Oh, um, so I mean, so much that I can, whenever I do a post, I get positive feedback from, you know, children to adults. People love seeing the, the work that we are doing and the work we're doing for children. And it's a beautiful place to be. Um, I want to say on the book that's coming out, Butterfly Whispers, it's a grief and loss um, um, and hope book with Joy, our character that we keep talking about. So, um this is this is something that that may give you goosebumps or chills. It did for us. So in April of this year, uh, um, I was with my fiance at the time. I we're now married. I woken up one morning and I said, I know what the grief and loss book is going to be. I've been asked to do a grief and loss book since my first children's book, Unicorn Jazz, and it's not something you can just create. I needed time. It was never coming to me. And so in April of this year, I woke up and. I had this epiphany and I said, I know what the book's going to be about. I said, it's going to be the representation of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. And that's the change in, in loss and, in, and us becoming a new. So fast forward two hours later at church, the pastor shows in his message, a caterpillar to butterfly transformation in his message. We looked at each other and he's like, that's never happened to me. I go, that's happened to me many times. And that was God speaking that you're on the right track. And I'm just, I'm just so happy that I have these, these messages that can come to me that we can put out to the world to help others. And I think that's, that's just part of the great commission. You all know this is that we are designed to help others. We are designed to not make it about ourselves and, and to serve others, not be selfish. As I said earlier, mysterious. And in that example, not so mysterious ways. Right. Yeah. My sister Suzanne, uh, on, on that note, will say that's God's mysterious wisdom. <laughs> well, uh, Lisa, I again want to thank you for coming on all over the place. Folks, hashtag be bold, be brave. Make sure you check her out on Throw a Rock in the Air, or you can just go to the website I mentioned earlier. And those of you watching on, on YouTube, you'll, you can see it without me having to spell it all out there. But, you know, she's on Facebook, she's on Instagram, X, YouTube. Check it out. Get out there and, and just spread that message of joy. Thank you so much, Lisa, for, for being instrumental in that with, with the children. Thank you. Can I ask each of you one more question on turning the table? We're, we're going we're to flip the table. You have to go to Jim first, though. Okay, Jim, I have a question that I'm I'm talking about and writing about in my blog that's called What's okay. It Like to Be? It's My question is, what's it like to be you? What would your answer be? And I know you're put on the spot and it could be many things, but what comes to your heart? What's it like to be Jim? What's it like to be me? Um, well, I mean, obviously complicated question, but um, <clears throat> I would say I, so I struggle with, you know, a lot of anxiety and some other things. Um, so when it's kind of going out into the world, uh, it's a little bit like walking, uh, walking through wet mud on a daily basis and just struggling with things and, um, and, uh, just kind of, just kind of dealing with that day-to-day -day stuff. Um, but at the same time being incredibly blessed and feeling incredibly comfortable in my own skin when I am home with my family and the people I love, I've been incredibly blessed with the people in my life. Um, and there's like, there's a, a line from, uh, the Simpsons movie where Homer says to, says to Marge, um, I just try to make the day not hurt until I come home to you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a little blunt, but, uh, it's, it's, that's kind of how things, things are a little bit. It's, um, you know, I take a lot of refuge in my family. I take a lot of refuge in God. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that, like that famous, uh, Bible quote says, you try to try to put on the armor of God and, um, and just kind of get through, uh, whatever it is you're going through that day. And uh, so, uh, so uh, you know, despite struggles, I feel very blessed to be me. 
That's beautiful. Yeah, that reminds me of uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 um, scripture that says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And thanks for sharing. I'm sure so many people can relate to those emotions of anxiety. And I mean, again, it's part of being grown up and having the different seasons. So I will be praying for you on that. Um, and Eric, uh, your turn. What's it like to be you, Eric? What's it like to be me? Oh boy, it's, uh, to, if I may quote my brother, Michael, goony goo. Uh, and I'm the happy one in the family. So, and then sometimes that, that's at a cost of uh, not being serious enough at times. But you know, it's, uh, you know, there, there's rock bottom that gets hit. Um, or has been hit, but just knowing that he is always there and that, you know, uh, that, uh, that poster you see or the, the thing growing up, you know, oh, that's, that's the one set of footprints. And yet where, where were you during that? He's like, no, that's when I was carrying you. And so I yes. know no matter how low things may get or difficult, it is, life is difficult. You know, there's moments of joy. It's like you said, there are all, all the seasons, uh, time, time for all of it. But I just know that, I'm here to serve him. And every day I wake up, I throw it to him and just pray for patience, humility, forgiveness in the almighty love and loving people as you know, as he wants us to love, as we love our neighbor, love him, honor him and love, love others as we love ourselves and just spread joy into the world. So, and that's, I, I love, that's why I, I really am I'm glad that we were finally able to get you on the show. And I, again, I just want to encourage people, check out the stuff over on YouTube. Make sure you see it. The There's Joy and the, the Unicorn Jazz series. Looking forward to more books. And yeah, it, it, it's all thanks to the man upstairs. And he's, he's put us all together for that reason and just uh, helping each other moving forward. I'm so grateful, grateful for this divine connection, um, Jim and Eric. Thank you for having me on my sh on your show. <laughs> thank you for hey. having me on your show, and thank you God for having us together on this show. Once again, Amen. And Lisa yeah. Crowley, thank you for doing everything that you do, and thanks for joining us here on All Over the Place, folks. Again, check out Lisa Caprelli over at Amazon. I, well, go to that link tree that I, I showed earlier. Go there; you'll see everything about her. And if you are a podcast host, get her on the show. I will, as we've learned over the last however many minutes, fun, fun guest, Lisa, one more time. Thank you so much. And, you know, look forward to bringing you back on to promote, promote anything you got going on. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Thanks again, everyone, for listening. We'll be back real soon here on All Over the Place. Take care. Bye.